Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Bit pusher. Um, once again, messing around with ye old internets, messing around with YouTube and doing something not related to music. Um, just in some geek mode today. I wanted to actually give a little demonstration, a brief demonstration and review, talk a little bit about um, Acer XC704G. Pretty, except that free BSD case badge isn't on there. We'll get to that. But um, yeah, so this is a lightweight, cheap little tower. I paid about 80 bucks for this puppy on eBay um, as a refurbished model in the box with a fresh keyboard and mouse and everything from Acer. Um, as of this video, I don't see any more of those on there right now. There's parts on there for it, um, but I have a site that I found some more of these linked below. It's like 120 bucks. These are a cheap tower, very cheap. Um, I'm gonna show you the components inside here shortly. It's, it's built with laptop hardware, or at least I swear it's laptop hardware, but it's an El Cheapo little tower, dual 1.60 gigahertz Intel Celeron. Uh, comes with four gigs of RAM which is only, it's RAM slots are only a single chip and it's the small chips like you have in laptops and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. In my case, however, I upgraded that with an eight gig chip and put in a solid state drive. These are things you're gonna need to do uh, to get any real good use out of this tower other than of course, something else I'll be getting to is changing the operating system. So this little tower, I only bought this, I didn't buy, like, I bought this for a toy. I did not buy this because I needed a new computer. I've got several machines and I, my day, daily driver most of the time has started to become this. Um, I have a free BSD tower that I use frequently. I've got my Calibri OS tower, which is just a toy, because uh, I do love Calibri, and of course, my Mac. Uh, so yeah, I bought this as a toy because the towers that I like to play around with, uh, as far as changing hardware and operating systems and things are all old, very old. And I wanted something that is not cutting edge, obviously, but a toy. So I'm gonna go as cheap as I can, but newer nonetheless. And this is a dual 64 bit system. So it's at least something. But uh, yeah, this little tower rocks. It's actually smoking fast with FreeBSD on it. It makes a great desktop if you use FreeBSD. Um, the models that I had seen on eBay when I ordered mine up with Acer certified. Um, yeah, the, the towers that I had seen either shipped with free DOS or Windows 10. And just for the hell of it, I picked up the Windows 10 one because I have copies of free DOS laying around. So, because I use free DOS from time to time. But um, yeah, so this puppy um, came with Windows 10 and it was probably the worst couple of hours I've ever experienced. Like, it was ridiculous. Um, trying to get that system to run and update, and I hate Windows. I absolutely hate Windows. Um, so I am very prejudiced in that regard. But that aside, um, I filled it with such a cheap, low budget tower. Um, Windows 10 is just entirely too heavy for this thing. I mean, it's, it, the operating system is so bloated and just so it's it's not hardware efficient and it was uh, too heavy for this machine I think so as I tinkered around with this um, I wanted to try uh, Minuet and Calibri which neither of those would boot um, I'll get into some of the technical reasons for that here shortly once I get the camera in my hand we'll go through some things but yeah so Acer made a cool little tower here nonetheless. I think this tower, I, I've grown quite fond of it. It's fun. This is the coolest toy I've bought in a long time just because it's it actually cooks. Um, does a fantastic job under free BSD for many obvious reasons. You know, it's such a lightweight system and all that. But yeah. Combine this with this and you have a cool little tower. Let's take a look inside this thing. All right. So I am just chilling out on my floor because I told you I don't have a, 
I've said in videos before, hell no, I don't have a professional camera set up, workbench, or any of that kind of stuff. So, anyways, dust on top there. This tower is awesome. Um, there's the front. Oh, yeah, I gave it some swag. It, uh, it needed a little help. But, yeah, so as you can see on the front here, you do have a memory card reader and a pair of USB 2.0 ports, um, standard jacks. As you can see right here is the optical drive, and here's the button for it. This is a laptop drive. It just barely, it pops open, and then you pull it out and put the disc on the, the you know, centerpiece and push it closed. It's a laptop drive. Um, the sides just have a plain, basic look about it. I added a little bit of swag to that side as well. And let's look at the hardware. What the hell is that? Let me crack this puppy open. So now with the sides off, I said it was running on FreeBSD. Yeah. So I got that from the store some time ago, and I stuck it in there just for the sake of this video because you know I got the daemon running things. So, anyways, as you can see, there is a lot of room inside this case. Um, for being a little case because, as I said, it is basically a laptop bit of hardware here. Um, small, small motherboard, small processor, small fan. Um, I frankly can't tell you what this slot here is for because I don't know what type of card fits in such a tiny spot. Um, I, I don't know. So... You guys maybe could tell me. But then uh, there's our single RAM chip, which I've got an eight gigabyte unit on the way, um, made for this machine, theoretically. Now, up inside here, it's sort of a sideways setup. Optical drive. And beside that is space for the hard drive mount. Um, so this dude here was what came in it. Traditional. This is the only actual, uh, you know, PC, normal PC part I feel was in this thing. Because as I said, I'm convinced it's all laptop hardware. But there's my solid state drive hooked up via SATA. So yeah, this thing is lightweight. And without a doubt, cheap. Absolutely cheap. Nothing going on here, just lots of space. So one thing is for sure, little this little dude here will probably never get very hot even when it's crunching. Because it's just not that not that powerful. On the back of the machine, this could be a problem for some people, not for me. Your outputs are HDMI only. There is no VGA, no DVI, no display port. Um, I use a monitor, a television for my computer monitor, as a matter of fact, because I wanted a big ass screen. That's just how I like to do things, so this works for me. Power supply. It's, again, laptop style power supply. There's a power brick that attaches to this. Ethernet, those are USB 3.0 ports. So I was sort of surprised it had something like that, and then more of your standard sound card stuff. So there she is. I left these on here just because I kind of like them. So how does this run? Let's take a look. Alrighty, what's up guys? Let's take a quick run here and see how this thing runs. Also, there is something I think you need to see, or I'm going to show you about the BIOS. This thing, by the way, this tower has a white LED on the front for the power switch. That's a nice touch. I don't know how well you can see this um, coming from a phone camera. But uh, something to mention about the BIOS in particular. There's not much to it. I actually updated it. Um, from what was available on Acer's website. It came with R01B1 uh, as a system version, and now I'm running B3, which didn't seem to me to do anything. But um, there's not a lot here. 
Uh, if you go into like CPU and chipset, you can't change that at all. Uh, integrated peripherals. You can either enable or disable the SATA controller. The thing is, there is nothing here to allow you to change the SATA controller's operation. Like you don't have uh, RAID, AHCI, or IDE. This is a problem because you're basically stuck with UEFI compatible operating systems. Um, it took me, I experimented a lot before I stuck BSD on this machine um, with multiple systems. This is the only machine I've ever encountered in my life that I could not install FreeDOS on. You heard that right, FreeDOS. Um, it likes to have your BIOS set up for IDE mode, but otherwise the boot media, once you are in the FreeDOS installer, will tell you it can't find any of the installation packages. There's a whole mess to go through to try to get around that. Um, at one point, I actually had the system booting from just the base FreeCom, you know, FreeDOS's command com, with nothing else, and that was a pain in the ass. So, uh, power on stuff, nothing there. Um, this system boot state, secure boot. Um, this can be enabled or disabled. Uh, if you're going to take Windows 10 off of one of these, you have to disable that. No password. On this, this compatibility mode thing, you would think that that would solve all your problems because you can change it from straight UEFI or have it always enable compatibility support, change your boot filter to legacy. That solves the problem, right? Afraid not. Once again, this, as you're seeing it there with uh, always and uh, legacy compatibility mode fully enabled, it would not allow me to boot or install other OSs. Everything gave me trouble because again, I had seen these errors in the past with other systems by simply not enabling IDE mode instead of AHCI. So I don't get this. I mean, you know, I have a lot of experience with multiple operating systems and I know what it wants and I know what some of them want to have for settings. And this, this is the only machine I've ever come across in my life to give me so many problems with things. Like I said, couldn't even install FreeDOS. So anyways, you need a UEFI compatible system. I just leave it like this. I let it be straight UEFI because the 64-bit BSD install I have is compatible with this. So that's that, I'll just discard any changes. So boom, it fires right, I'll even hit control I'll delete here and let it start from the beginning. Quick beep, boom, there's my loader. So I'm already booting the OS. And watch how fast this fires up. It doesn't take long at all. Well, it does, all my systems do this too. Like it's going to hang down here for just a moment while it's negotiating with my network. That is not the computer's fault. Um, so don't, uh, don't judge the performance on that. But, cause honestly this machine just, it fires up and goes once you take windows off of it and stick an SSD in it. Which, if you're curious on the SSD subject, I actually did that first thing um, because I wanted to try it. I just wanted to see how it would improve. Um, I happened to have a, a install of Windows 10 on hand that I was able to use, and it, honestly, it's it's ridiculous that I couldn't tell much of a difference. But anyways. I use Window Maker. Uh, I know it's a little archaic for most people, but I actually really like this interface. Got my little cube and my matrix code running up here, right? But check this out. I will fire up the full GIMP suite for some image editing. Boom, that's online. Uh, about my wallpaper. It's a 1080p wallpaper. So boom, so I'm in here working on editing stuff. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and kick up some YouTube. Hey, we know this guy here.
So, got a YouTube video playing while I'm out here editing my uh, images. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Stick some stars in there. And just for the heck of it, I'll fire up the complete LibreOffice suite too. Boom. Instant. I mean, this, this thing's actually really cool. And here I am. So I got a YouTube video playing back there. Gimp is running. And my music video is playing on YouTube. I don't feel like any of this took time to boot up. It loaded this straight away. Um, have excellent sound output through my HDMI there. Which if you're wondering why it looks that way, it's because that's the way I made my video. If you've never seen my music video for a song I wrote called Man of Shadows. So yeah, browsing around the web, editing images, and jumping back to LibreOffice to do things. <laughs> so there it is. Um, I know that some of the speed is probably due to uh, the fact that I'm running a very lightweight interface. Um, I haven't installed like GNOME or KDE on here because I don't like them. Um, XFCE is tolerable with some customization, but when I first learned you know, Linux and Unix, I, I happened to have a real fondness for Window Maker, so this is just what I choose to use. GNU step environment and all that's awesome. But yeah, so um, right up to now, this thing's been an excellent machine. I have no problems with this. This little dude is fast and it's extremely cheap. Oops. I cannot type today. I think it's shut down actually. So there you have it. It's a slick little machine for around a hundred bucks, don't you think? I mean, I feel everything's rolling along pretty good. Um, and it took me some time to get BSD configured, of course, but I love BSD. I would choose that over Linux any day. I first learned a lot from Linux thanks to Slackware. Um, spent a couple of years running that. I even built a custom tower once upon a time in my early 20s specifically for a Slackware install. But um, yeah, BSD, the way I have it configured, um, I've got just a ton of software available to me on there uh, to tinker with. Um, and it's a good little desktop for the price. I just, I, so BitPusher would recommend that uh, if you got some money to blow and want a quick little machine for some desktop tasks. Um, I haven't tried gaming on it and I doubt it's made for that, but that little machine might surprise you with a light system on it, lightweight OS. And uh, yeah, so hey, thanks for watching. I will see ya.